you recognise this man here, Mick Shannon, who runs Carnarfon in the listed Montrose Stakes next. But he had an important announcement earlier today in his high achieving career. He's retiring for the second time. You've decided to hand over the reins to your son, Jack. Well, it, I think it's uh, it's been knowledge that we were going to have to do it sooner or later. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's time he had a go, you know, and I decided that uh, I didn't want to fall out with him. So we we had better have a dual license. So <laughs> I felt that was the best way of <laughs> very wise <laughs> so uh, no I'm looking forward to it really I mean he's excited and we got a few nice I think we got as nice a two year two year olds this year we've had for a long time so at least he's got something to work with so yeah. um, and the owners have been very very loyal and you know and I'd just like to thank everybody obviously as I've done before that that helped me this far you know through you know through my training career but uh, some great characters some good people bought a lot of nice horses and we've had a lot of fun when you started out, could you have imagined that you achieved everything you did with all your Group 1 winners? I mean, notably Hume's Zane, people yeah, will be yeah. thinking of, but Zabiel, Queen's Logic. Yeah, that's right. Well, they were, you know, Bintel Els and, you know, as, as I say, there was so many of them, you know, the, the two-year-olds especially, you know. Um, we, um, Joe Richardson and myself, we sort of set our target to buy sort of some good, sharp two-year-olds when I started, you know, and, and we didn't have many horses, but we thought if we didn't get hit the ground running, we'd had no chance. And, uh, you know, she, she had a great eye for, two, you know, for sharp horses. And we bought some good, some good and we won most of the races, at, I think, at Royal Ascot, and, which was a great help and got us going. And, uh, you know, obviously Jabber and uh, Sheikh Mohammed and Sheikh Ahmed, who had horses maybe before Godolphin came along, you know, and. Uh, so I was very lucky that I had some good horses. To Borgs, he was a very good horse. Mm. You know, um, um, he only ran three times for us, but won two Group Ones. Mm. But uh, um, you know, then then you was a character, professional loser, as I called him. <laughs> High class professional loser. Good night. Second in the <laughs> arc, I'd take that. Well, he won he won four and a quarter million, so I don't think he did too bad. You know, <laughs> um, so so we've had a lot of we've had a lot of. I mean, that's one we bought for thirty grand. So. And uh, it, to this day, we've got, I mean, I think in the yard, I don't think all our horses are, are sort of Gregorians or Bungo in the Jungle, 60s icons, mm. cityscapes. They're all under five grand, cable bays. But as I said to Jack, we just got to work with the toys we got, the tools we got, and uh, let's hope we can find a good one. And every now and then, you know, they're not as good as they used to be, but when you win a Cambridgeshire with a, I think he was a premium stallion, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. The horse that, uh, that bred... Um, what was he? I forget the, what his name was. Now, majestic. Yes, yes. Um, you know, I mean, that gives you a lot of pleasure as well. You know, and you know, I think that's the great thing about horse racing. Whether you're you, you win Group Ones or win Sellers, you get a buzz from it. I don't care who you are. If you don't, you shouldn't be in the game. <laughs> and uh, you know, I've been very lucky that I've had some great people, some good, great assistant trainers, Mark Wallace and uh, Joe Chewett. You know, Mark Walford who's doing brilliant yes, up the yes, north. Absolutely. You know, we've, I've had some great people through my hands and, I, and there's a few lads, you know, that I see a lad there who used to train, uh, Dave Burton, you know, yeah, yeah. He, he had a go at training and a lot of them have and it's such a tough game and uh, a lot of them, you know, have been in the game and I dipped their toe in the water and the water's too hot in, <laughs> at the moment, but uh, very hard for, for young people to get going. So. You know, I'm pleased that I, th I think we can give Jack a chance. You know, he's going to have sort of 70 horses with a bit of luck. And all the owners have been very loyal and, you know, stuck with us. And, uh, and as I said, I've got the owners that, uh, you know, you Peter Taplins and Patrick Trance, they were with me when I started. It's a yeah. tremendous legacy so, that, that, that you leave. Tell me we're still going to see you on the race course. You're still oh going yeah. to come racing, aren't you? I, I've been dealing in horses for too long now, so, since I was playing football. So I think that, that gives me a buzz. I enjoy buying and selling horses, and um, I, I can't see me giving that up. And, and I think I might be his biggest owner, by the way. <laughs> well, that, that is great to hear. What chances for Carnarfon here in the Montrose? Man? I think she's got an outstanding chance. I mean, her form's there in the book. She's a... Uh, you know that was a good run at Pontefract. We thought she would run well at Pontefract, and uh, I think she got a great chance today. I think she'd come in and out the dip. 
we'll find out in a minute, won't we? Well, I hope she does you proud. Uh, uh, congratulations, you know, you. such a high achieving career in two sports, getting right to the top in both of them, a tremendous achievement and also passing on to, to Jack and giving him a, a real chance at the right That's time. That's very kind of you and I'd like to thank everyone for their... Mind you, walking in here, if people... T I thought I was dead, you know, I was taking me pulse, they said, all retired, I think. It says I'm still... The heart's still beating, you know, so I'm all right. I'm just... A, but if, if it's, no, it's lovely that uh, everybody's been so kind and, uh, you know, racing is a, is, a, is, is a great sport and it's just if we could just get the prize money right, yeah. there's only one thing yeah. and that would put it all right. It would stop all the arguing between race courses, jockeys, owners, trainers. Yes. That would solve it all. It is. How you do it, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's your third job. <laughs> Best of luck, Mick. Thank you very much. Well, we spoke to Mick before the race and he was hopeful that Carnarvon was going to run really well. Jack, his son, and the man who's going to be taking over the reins of the business from 2023 is here in the winner's enclosure. Well, he was right, the old man, wasn't he? No, very much so. Um, she's a very nice filly. And, you know, we, 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 we chucked her in the deep end up at Pontefract there the last time. I think she was rated 77. And we always thought she was an improving filly. And, she took the step up at Pontefract and we came in today, her work's been fantastic since then and we, we thought we'd be tough to beat along with the Dermot Weld filly, you know, at this time of year form really and, and experience pays and, but I, I didn't quite expect her to do it the way she did, she, she, she showed a lot of class there today. She really did, tell me what you were thinking with Connor <laughs> sitting there on a, on a horse that was clearly travelling so well. Well, I, I, he kicked for home, and I thought I thought it was done and dusted. So I, I, I started walking off, but then I realised there's another furlong to go. So, <laughs> but it was one of those things, you know. She, they weren't good enough to take her in, to take her far enough, you know. And um, you know, she kind of said she just pricked her ears and just pulled up a little bit in front. She's a filly that we think will stay further next year as well. But I think we'll probably we'll probably stick to a mile next year uh, to start off with and see if she can compete a bit a bit higher level than this. And if not, we'll we'll, we'll probably try and stretch her out a little bit. So we'll see. The logical thing was it would be something like the Nell Gwynn. I mean, she's, she deserves her place in something like that, doesn't she? Well, I think she does. The only problem is it's seven furlongs. Yeah. Um, and I do think this filly, you know, she does it. But today she showed enough pace that she probably could step back to seven for something like that. You never know. We might have a, you never know. I'm going to have to talk to the owners and dad and everything like that. But we might just have a swing of the guineas. Who knows? But and then see if she does. She's not quite good enough for that. We might step her up and trip. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just delighted. I've got such a lovely filly to go to war with next year. Absolutely, and typical as well of, of the yard in that she's finding this huge amount of improvement. You know, you, you've seen a lot of her, you think you know what she is, and then suddenly she's actually much more than that. Yeah, oh, no, Dad's proved it over the years, over, over the last 30 years. He's had horses do this all the time. I think we had a filly called Lahalib that did a very similar thing, won the Rockfell, and then went on to, to finish second in the Irish Guineas and won the EP Taylor. And, you know, he's done it over for years and years, and I just hope I can re replicate it in some way. And what, did you know that your dad was thinking of, of making this year his final year with his name above the door? Yeah, no, hey, look, I've been back with dad now for about seven years since being in Australia and America and with Clive Britton up here in Newmarket. And well, we've been discussing it for two or three years, probably having arguments about when and where it's going to happen. But, it, you know, we, we had the discussions through the year and we sort of thought it was the right time um, to, to, for him to be able to enjoy it as well. You know, he's, he's still got enough energy and everything else like that to help me through the first however many years we possibly can together um, at the start and I think that's an going to be an invaluable thing for me to have someone like him behind me and I, and I hope that he'll be able to enjoy it as well um, you know he won't have to put up with all the all the stuff that is that it's a bit nasty that comes with training yeah. horses and it, that flat can land on me and he can just sit back enjoy the horses and do what he does what he's done for 33 years which is assisting just training these lovely horses. You've been obviously watching your your dad's career closely what would you say is his greatest achievement? I'd have to say Yuma Zane, you know, to, to finish, to come back, well, four years, as he said earlier on, he finished second, beating a nose by rail link, rail link at the pre-neal the year before he ran in his first arc to produce a horse. And I'll tell you what, he, he was one of the worst workhorses you'll ever see in your life. He'd worked with a 60 rated horse and to know that he had him spot on every year for that Arc de Triomphe. You know, I'll, I'll never forget those days, good and bad. Um, but you know, and it, but some of the great fillies, Queen's Logic, Flashy Wings, Pintalel. You know, he's just been a genius, and um, you know, I'll be forever grateful for the opportunity he's given me. Do you feel any pressure 
stepping into such big shoes, yes. Yes is the answer to that. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've got to have a bit of confidence about you and be, be positive in, in your own ability. And, and I do. And I've got a fantastic team at home and a fantastic team of owners um, and hopefully a lovely team of horses to go to war with. So I'm very positive I could be... Uh, I could be successful, but yes, very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, it, that is very understandable. I think you wouldn't be human if, if you weren't. But you, I think you've got a really good team headed by this horse, Kanaf, and very, very best of luck for next year, and well done here. Thank you very much. Thank Cheers. You. Thank Thank you.